Hey guys! So someone had recently requested um, that someone do a tutorial or video showing how to do the uh, split hem on the new Patterns for Pirates Hepburn dress. And as I tested it and I made quite a few of them at this point, I figured I would just go ahead and do that. So this is what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. Um, it's actually pretty straightforward. It's not, it's not difficult. So once you actually understand what to do, it shouldn't be, shouldn't be a problem. I'll show you the inside as well. So basically what you're doing here, I'll obviously show you how to do it, but what we're doing is we're kind of snipping in, we're folding these parts of the hem in and then that's just sewn as as usual. You can even use a serger as you see I have done here. So let me show you how to do that. Um, for our purposes I just have a little <laughs> fake dress. I just kind of did a little half piece here. Um, what you're going to need to start is you need to transfer your marking from your um, pattern piece that will have the, the line for your split hem. So mark that. You're going to want it on the back side just to make it easier because you're obviously going to have your two dress pieces right sides together when you're doing the step. And then what you're going to want to do, I already made the little mark there, if you can see that. Uh, but you're going to want to make another mark about two to three inches. It's, it doesn't have to be exact. Two to three inches up from the, the split seam marking. Um, so you would just, you know, pop a little mark on there. And then we are going to just uh, stitch a line on, I'm just going to do it on the standard regular sewing machine. I'm going to stitch a line from this marking um, to that other one. And that'll allow us to start the split seam process. So I'm just going to pop a few pins in here to kind of keep things stabilized. In theory, at this point, <laughs> I know this is, we don't actually have a full piece here, uh, but at this point you would have already dealt with the other steps in the pattern um, where you have the arm skites. Is that how you say that word properly? I don't actually know. Um, the, the neckline and stuff, that's all done. So all that's left to do here is to do the side seams and the bottom hem. Um, so you're putting your pattern right side together, all right, and then you're doing this mark here, that second one up from the side split, and then I kind of just like to pop some pins in just to keep everything lined up, and then let me show you over on my machine what I'm doing here. Um, but just to explain it also in advance, we're gonna do a half inch seam allowance. Um, and I actually use a straight stitch. Um, I, I mean, ideally you can use a zigzag and maybe you should use a zigzag. Um, but personally, I've been using a straight stitch just cause I don't, have, I don't want to have to deal with thinking about the zigzag and the width and getting that in the seam allowance and that little bit of not super stretchy-ness on the side seam isn't going to make a difference um, in the finished results. Um, I've made a few this, I mean I've made, to be honest, I've made like six of them this way at this point and I haven't had any issues. So let me pull my machine over and I'll stitch that real quick. Alright, so I have my machine here. I, again, as I said, I'm going to do a straight stitch. Um, I haven't had any issues. It's just a very small portion that won't have the same stretch. The rest of the seam, as long as you're using um, your preferred stretch stitch, should be fine. But again, totally your choice. Um, but I'm going to stitch from that mark here to the split hem marking that we transferred from the pattern. And we're going to use a half inch seam allowance, which is the seam allowance that is called for in the rest of this pattern. Let me get this lined up here. And I also do recommend um, 
taking the time to switch to a stretch needle in your machine um, just to avoid any funny business. Uh, I think it, it could save you some some headache and if you're already using your regular sewing machine it should be in there anyway so not a big deal. So I'm going to start stitching. I am going to back stitch just because here and we're stitching down to that mark. Back stitching again. Right. So that's what we end up with. I'm going to snip some of these little strands. Right, next step, once we have that part stitched, I, I was a little inconsistent with my stitching it looks like, but that's fine. Um, we're just going to measure half inch up from the bottom of that stitch line. Again, this is the split seam marking. So this would be the hem. That's the split seam, uh, split hem mark. And then we want to go half inch up from that point. So I just like to lay this out here. Just throw a mark on there as a guide. And you would of course want to do this to both sides. Um, but again, I'm just using a little <laughs> fake piece of dress here just to show you how to do this. So once you have that half inch mark up there, you're going to want to snip in up to but not through the stitches you just made there. So get close, as close as you can even, um, but don't actually snip into the stitches. That is not what we want. So that's where we're at here. Um, at this point, what we want to do is to stitch the rest of the side seam. So you will start from this point and go all the way up to the top. Um, and if you have sleeves, you would just, as you would be normally sewing um, any other garment, you would just sew right up and then up to the sleeve and everything like normal. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm sewing this on my serger, um, which because we've done this step here, it's not a big deal, um, not a problem to stitch with your serger. Um, so you would just, this is the hem here. So you're gonna wanna start from your snip and then go up towards um, your neckline. So I just will kind of open that up. I'm gonna put it under the foot here. And again, it is a half inch seam allowance for this pattern. It's gonna kind of line it up. And you can kind of pull that a little extra to make sure it doesn't get caught in the initial sewing, but it should be good. And then away we go. And so stitch with a half inch seam allowance all the way up. Um, both sides, your side seams. And mine is, my little fake dress here is almost, almost finished. So what we are left with, let me pull my, push my machine out of the way. What we're left with is this here. So got close to that, which is good. Um, that's the hem. I'm gonna take that out now. And then what we have here, if you were to open this up, is this flap here, which can open up. These are the two split hem, <laughs> the split hem hems. I don't know what to call it, but that's created from doing that snip there. So it all works out nice and neat. 
Um, I recommend going and pressing your seam and then pressing those to kind of lay nicely here. Um, and what I prefer to do personally is, I'll show you the one that I've done. So that's what it ends up looking like, right? And I personally prefer to uh, do my actual hem and then to hem these little bits over and stitch them down. So at this step, at this point, I would go and press my side seam. I always press my seams to the back of the garment whenever possible. Um, if you used a serger, I would just tidy this up a little bit. So I would thread this just up through the seam just to get rid of it and tuck it away. And then I'm going to take it over while I'm at the ironing board. I'm also going to hem this up. It's a one inch hem allowance for the bottom hem. I'm going to hem that up, press it, and then stitch it down. Same for this side. It's obviously, I mean, everything's all kind of individually done because there is that split seam. So once you've done that, then we will fold that over. Um, but let me take us well, rather, I'm going to go do that and do some pressing, and then I'll come back and show you the rest of the step for this. All right, so, so far, so good here. What we've done uh, is, I'm going to show you on the back side. So I have pressed up my bottom hem by one inch. Um, I have actually stitched the bottom hem. Um, and while I was pressing the bottom hem, I, I did also press, um, just like a memory press, pre-press. So those are kind of just lying nicely. Um, but these you're going to fold over half an inch. I usually find, whenever I do this, I do tend to find that I'm not getting a full half inch just with my stitch mark. It's closer to, oh, I don't know, between three-eighths of an inch and half inch. Um, so just be aware of that when you end up actually stitching these down. Um, cause obviously if you're, you know, trying to accommodate four half inch, you may not be catching it. So what I usually do is stitch a little under like a three eighths seam allowance when I'm doing this section. Um, what I do find to be helpful, don't be afraid to use some wash away wonder tape. Um, I kept finding that when I was stitching this down and I got up to this point, um, as I was kind of up here and turning and stuff, this would want to shift around on me. And I finally tried to just pop a little piece of Wonder Tape. Um, you could also use, I mean, you know, just whatever. There's fabric basting glue or even, I'm pretty sure, just regular glue sticks will work. But yeah, so I just pop a little, little piece right there. Could even do littler than that. And then it'll just hold everything down and you won't have to worry about it shifting as you go. This is, I haven't used that yet. So I do that on the top for sure. Um, don't have to. It's absolutely possible to do it without it. I just find it easier, don't have to think about it as much, don't have to be as careful when you're stitching. And then you can also do it down here um, as well, just whatever, whatever you prefer. So I'm going to pull my machine over and then the last step here is really just to stitch that down. You can use a cover stitch. Um, I have again opted on most of mine to just use a straight stitch, to be honest. Um, I don't feel like this especially, or this particularly, does not need to stretch. Um, I don't know what situation where I need these hems to be stretchy. So I'm just going to straight stitch, but you can absolutely use a zigzag, use your cover stitch, whatever you're comfortable with. 
Um, let me pull my machine over. This is going to be a little, a little annoying and rocky for a second. <laughs> there we go. Get everything lined up ish as best we can here. Let me move the camera a tiny bit. Sorry, this is like, I like how the last step I just kind of wing it here. All right, so I think, what am I gonna do? I think I'm going to, I'm trying to remember what I did for the other ones. Um, I feel like I stitched from the right side. Yeah, I think I did. I stitched from the right side, but you can do whatever you're more comfortable with. Sometimes it's easier to stitch from the bottom side, especially if you're using a straight stitch or something where the stitches are the same on both sides. Um, it's obviously not going to matter which side you stitch with because it'll look the same on the back, theoretically. So, let me see here. This is a new machine for me, so I'm not super familiar with the <laughs> seam allowance uh, markings yet. So bear with me here. I'm just going to do what I, what I believe to be three eighths of an inch. Cause again, um, I somehow end up not really getting a true half inch on these, uh, usually. So I'm just gonna do what works and it really doesn't matter, um, in theory here. So I'm doing straight stitch. I'm going to start, make sure to backtrack on my stitches there and then off we go again you if you hadn't moved to a stretch needle before this step like when we were doing that initial little bit um, I absolutely would now because you don't want to get any weird pulling or whatever and so I usually go up about three-eighths of an inch half an inch ish a little I mean you really you have a half inch window based on the snip that we did so I mean three eighths of an inch to half an inch just obviously if you go past the half inch mark you're not going to be catching the top part of this which wouldn't be the you know end of the world here but just just be aware I always kind of try to eyeball this here I think that seems Okay. Oh yeah, perfect. And then right back down the other side. And then we're back stitching again. I'm not being super tidy here just because, again, this isn't really, <laughs> it's not an actual dress. But there you have it, and I'll show you the back side in a sec. You just snip these little bits. Um, that is what we're left with. Yeah, so again, if I was actually making this, I probably would have been a little more neat there, but just so you can see the back. We caught everything and we are good. You can, um, as the pattern says, if you want, um, after you do the snipping of the seam, the side seam there, and then you sew up the rest of the seam, you can, if you prefer, you can finish the edges of this seam um, portion before you do any of this hemming stuff so you can serge these little bits as well. I don't think that's a necessary step um, or I don't feel it is personally for me just because it's a knit and it's not gonna start unraveling or anything. Um, so I this is this is how I how I opt to do it and I think it looks turns out pretty pretty tidy in the end. Um, hopefully this is helpful. Sorry if it's a little long-winded or I don't know I feel like I'm always super awkward whenever I try to do a video like this um, but if you have any questions 
let me know. I'm happy to try to answer or help or clarify or whatever you guys need. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day.